Bienvenue à la Gazette, monsieur Le Gaulle, de ce défilé. Nous apprécions beaucoup que vous avez pris le temps de, de parler avec nous. Je sais que mes collègues ont beaucoup de questions, okay. vous deux, euh, mais je voudrais commencer par euh, la question qui est euh, euh, préoccupante, front of mind, right. je pense, pour euh, beaucoup de Québécois et surtout nos lecteurs. Et ça, c'est la question de la santé. Okay. Oh, I expected. <laughs> so, first, I would like to thank you for the invitation. I'm with uh, Jacques Duchesneau. As I have announced uh, uh, when I uh, uh, announce him, he will be vice prime minister. So, he will be uh, the number two in our government if we are elected on September 4. Talking about sovereignty, well, I want to be clear. Somebody like uh, Jacques is a clear federalist since mm -hmm. ever. I've been a sovereignist. Uh, today, uh, my views have evolved for all kinds of reasons, but including the urgency of doing something in Quebec, uh, the, 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 what the population, uh, also what I see that the population want right now. But one thing is clear. Uh, I, I don't want to define myself as a federalist. I want to define myself as a Quebecer first, but also a Canadian. And uh, if we have a government of the coalition, it will be always Quebec first, the interest of Quebec first. But uh, I'm a Canadian. Uh, we uh, accept that we are in Canada, and uh, I think that we'll have good relationship uh, with uh, Stephen Harper. I think that uh, we agree uh, on uh, uh, many issues, including uh, economy and uh, public finances. Of course, we have some disagreement on some social issues. But uh, one thing is clear, and I want to be very clear. Uh, I'm back in politics for 10 years. I will never promote the sovereignty of Quebec. The, uh, my party will never promote the sovereignty of Quebec. So it means even after 10 years. So it's clear uh, like that. So I think that right now, uh, for the last few months, I haven't heard anybody talking about the referendum or sovereignty of Quebec. So people, they want us to have a clean up, clean up with corruption, and that's why Jacques is there. Clean up uh, in the bureaucracy, make sure that uh, we put the money uh, to give uh, uh, direct services to the population, so put the money in schools, in hospitals, and reduce uh, the income taxes of the middle class. So that's why we uh, took, uh, uh, we made a promise to uh, reduce the income taxes by one thousand dollars for all families earning less than a hundred thousand dollars a year. So uh, these are our priorities. We will, we want to work on these priorities, and we want to bring all Quebecers together. I think that we've been divided for the last 30, 35 years on the Constitution. It's about time that we work together. I think that uh, uh, all uh, Quebecers are part of our projects, and I will work for all Quebecers if I'm Prime Minister. Just a clarification. Yeah. You said your party will never promote sovereignty after 10 years. Yeah. But I wasn't too clear whether you, after 10 years, you personally, outside the CAQ, would promote I, I expect to be in politics for 10 years. So after 10 years, don't count on me. I'll do something else. Yeah. <laughs> but but, but, but would you promote sovereignty? I have uh, no intention of doing it. Yeah. No, but it, it means that uh, right now, I think that uh, the problem the constitutional issue is not solved and I will not participate to solve this issue all right so I want to be clear also on the other side we will not uh, uh, work on trying to sign <coughs> the Canadian Constitution we'll try to improve our uh, federation but we will not work uh, on that and I think that uh, after 10 years uh, some people will have to decide, and uh, even in our party, uh, uh, some people may decide to uh, go in a party that is uh, sovereignist. Uh, me, I won't do any politics after 10 years. So that's clear. 10 years from now? 10 years from now. I, I mean, two mandates. <laughs> okay. 
A lot of people have heard you say that what you just told us. Yep. I think one of the questions they want to know, though, and we've we've heard from Bernard Landry, who says you were yep. you were an, an independentist, you thought that yep. way. Mm -hmm. What happened that made you change your mind? Okay, I think that when you're with the Parti Québécois, the first article is about sovereignty of Quebec. So you have no choice, and uh, the reason why those people are together is only because of that. So I was seen like a guy more from the right than the average at the Parti Québécois. But at the time, like a businessman, I prefer to have 100% of the shares than 20 or 25% of the shares. But right now, my views evolve. I see that right now, because of this battle, we haven't made the changes that other countries uh, and other provinces uh, made. And I think that right now, we have to concentrate on education, on health care, on economy. And for me, it's not a priority anymore. More than that, I would say that if we are successful, my target in 10 years from now will be that we pay equalization payment instead of receive equalization payment. And I think that in doing so, we'll be in a better position to try to uh, renegotiate uh, an agreement where Quebec will sign the Constitution. Because right now, we don't have the good side of the back. And, but honestly, I won't, I won't be there in politics to take care of that. It will be, but I want to stay that open and I want to be clear. I think that, like Rabbi Bourassa said, Quebec is a distinct society, maybe today he would say a nation, free to choose uh, the, uh, its future. And the future can be a way to s sign the Constitution or sovereignty of Quebec. But people, they don't work, want to work on that for the next 10 years, and I don't want to work on that for the, the next 10 years. But in 10 or 15 years from now, the problem is not solved. So we may restart talking about this problem. Young people may restart to talk about uh, this issue because it's not acceptable that the Quebec is not uh, part of the Canadian Constitution. Mr. Legault, I don't have yeah. words in your mouth, but is it fair to say that you're saying Quebec can't afford sovereignty right now? Right now, it's not for for sure the the, the right timing for uh, sovereignty. The other side of the coin I'd, I'd like you to speak to a little bit is um, a sense that Quebec will decide when Quebec decides. I, I say we don't have the right side of the bat. I think that right now we receive uh, $8 billion of equalization payment mm -hmm. per year. Uh, why is that? It's because we have an average revenue that, that is lower than the rest of Canada. And we're not going in the right direction. Huh? That's very important to say that uh, nine years ago, when Mr. Charest took power, we were at the fourth rank. Right now, we're at the ninth rank. Only Prince Edward Island has a lower disponible, uh, disposable income than us. So uh, I can understand that for the rest of Canada, they should see us as a, a bit uh, kind of babies crying uh, for even, nothing. Even if you were elected. Yeah. You know, you're talking about go reaching a point perhaps after 10 years where... Yeah. Where Quebec, it's, it's you know Quebec first, yeah. advocating for Quebec within within the current framework. I mean, I guess I'm I'm trying to get you know I think right. the, the mood in the rest of Canada is that Quebec has has you know more or less everything that it should have. Thank you very much. And going going to the federation and asking for more whatever, I'm not sure is yeah. going to fall in receptive ears. Yeah, but notwithstanding we, the economy. Okay, but I think that we have uh, important negotiations to have with uh, Mr. Harper. First, just talk about health care uh, transfer. Mm -hmm. Right now, cost uh, to give same services in health care increased by 5% a year because of aging population, because of new drugs, uh, new technologies. Right now, Mr. Harper said our transfers will only increase by 3%, but its revenues increased by 5%. But that's a problem not only of Quebec, it's also a problem in each province. And I had the chance when I was a Minister of Health Care to discuss with, at the time, Tony Clements, who is now part of the Harper government. At the time, he was Minister of Health Care in Ontario, 
and he saw the same problem than us. The, 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 the portion of uh, the uh, contribution of the federal government has to increase at least at 5% a year. And if they don't want to do so, they should transfer us the tax points, the equivalent on, of tax points. And it would be more accountable also to see that we collect the taxes and we are accountable for than to uh, negotiate these transfers. But also what I like from the federal government right now is that they want to have a smaller government. They want to reduce income taxes for individuals and companies. I fully agree with that. So, uh, but on uh, some social issues, uh, we will have to have good discussions. Sir, are you saying, in effect, that Quebec should become a province more like the others in some respects? What I say is that Quebec will never be a province like the other one because of uh, our culture and because of French. And it's not a, a question of trying to close Quebec to the outside of Quebec. It's a question that if we want to protect what we call a dis distinct society, and I think it's positive for everybody, including the Anglophones, because all major cities in North America, in North America they try to find a way to be distinct. We are distinct. We are like uh, a bit uh, of France in North America. We have no choice but to keep the Bill 101. And why is that? It's because we need to receive about uh, 50,000 uh, new uh, immigrants every year. If they have the choice, there's an attraction to English in North America. So that's what I see, but we're not uh, uh, like the other provinces. I, w I would not be ready to, to, to say that. Well, not necessarily culturally, but economically. Mm -hmm. There are certain things you have to do to revive the economy that, as you yourself said, other people are doing that we have not. Can we keep this distinct état providence uh, that seems to be uh, believed in almost religiously here? Does that not have to change? I think we have to change uh, what they call the modèle québécois. I think that right now we have um, uh, an organization that is uh, uh, too centralized. Right now I've seen that in education and healthcare. Too many, too many decisions are taken either by ministries or by school boards or by uh, health care agencies. We should delegate more power to teachers, to doctors working in schools and hospitals, but make them accountable for the results. And that's the major change we have to do in Quebec. Um, our readers are obviously Anglophone, Allophone readers. Um, many have lived in this province for centuries. I mean, their families date back that long. Um, many of them are newcomers. This city, as you know, has changed amazingly in the last 30 years. Um, when they look at government services, which basically white Frank folks, when they look at the police, the firemen, all of these things, they get the impression that they are barred from activity in, in the Quebec society. Um, and certainly the, the statistics bear them out. Um, what are you going to do to tell our readers that, that, that Quebec society is open to them and that if they seek jobs in government, etc., that they will get the same treatment as anybody else? Okay. First, I think that uh, Anglophones and Allophones, they are part of the history of Quebec. We have uh, coming from uh, Ireland, from Scotland, uh, from Greek, from Italy, and they were there since the beginning. And our culture include uh, the, the, the culture uh, that was formed by all these people at the beginning. I think that in our regulations, the most important services are protected uh, uh, for uh, Anglophones. Let's take healthcare or school. And I would like to maybe take a few minutes to talk to you about uh, school boards because the Liberal Party is saying uh, uh, things that are not uh, true about our proposals. Right now, we have 69 school boards. S uh, 60 are French. They will become 30 service centers. We have nine English school boards. They will become nine service centers. 
All right? What we want is exactly what I just said, is to uh, transfer some powers from school boards to schools. There will be no mix between French and English schools. The Constitution protects the Anglophone community for uh, schools. But nothing is said that you cannot have, and we already had in Quebec, 1,600 uh, school boards. So we can have a school board per school. What we want is to transfer the democracy that is not working at, uh, at the level of school boards, because, because even on the English side, only 15% of the people vote. We want to transfer that to parents around each school. And uh, with the, the new organization, the service centers will be uh, managed or uh, under the direction of schools. So we'll keep on having, uh, for example, transportation put in common. But the, the bus will become the school. Why is that? Because I've noticed something uh, in my years in, in management uh, in the private sector. When you have two people in charge of something, nobody is in charge. And right now what we see is that when you go and see your school, it's always because of the school board and you have the opposite. Right now, the school will become more autonomous and we will have school that will decide which services will put in common. The school will decide also how they will use their budget. I just announced that we will have a billion dollars. Nobody is close to us even under a hundred million dollars, we want to put a billion dollars more every year in our school starting uh, at the fifth year of our mandate. So it will be done gradually. The, the money will be distributed to each school and schools will decide should I have smaller classes, more orthophonists, more uh, orthopedagogue, but it will be the choose of the means will be at the level of the school, not at the level of the school boards. So what about the decisions at the, at the regional service centers, and how will those people be selected? Okay, it will be the school together that we will uh, delegate people that will be on some committee, for example, for the transportation. But once the budgets are distributed between schools, Schools will decide what they do with the money. Right now, it's not the way it's wor working. I was there for three years. You have uh, uh, envelopes that are tagged. So you take, for example, $4,000 from the ministry to uh, the uh, school board to the, the school, and then at the end of the month, you have to report that the 4000 has been uh, spent on the right thing. But who will decide how this money the ministry, the, the ministry, and right now it's already the ministry doing that to school boards uh, with some criteria, like all schools in Quebec are uh, uh, quote with uh, uh, between one and ten for two criteria: average revenue and the uh, uh, scholarship of the mother. All right, and Don probably wants to follow up. Yeah, and we will distribute the money in a, uh, with more equity than what is done by some school boards right now. Because school boards right now, they like to split the money about equally, equally between schools instead of putting more money where needs are more important. Well, do, yeah. you have, do you have a legal opinion, an avis juridique? Yeah. Uh, stating that uh, your proposal is compatible yeah. with the 1990 uh, Mahé decision of the Supreme Court of Canada on uh, official language minority control uh, of their schools, and if so, can you produce that, okay. uh, that document for us? I don't have a, 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 a notice that I can produce, but I've consulted uh, people. As you know, the uh, coalition is not rich, even in what some people think. So it's the same thing with the studies of Hydro Quebec. It's not a question of uh, that I want, don't want to uh, publish them. It's only a question that uh, it has been done free uh, 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 by people that I think know what they are talking about. But I think uh, from the indications I had that we respect. Yes, we respect the Constitution with our proposal. 
with this proposal, it almost sounds like deregulation of schools. And so what would happen is that how would you provide for the expensive things that schools might not want to do because it eats up a lot of their budget? Uh, like what? Like uh, kids who are difficult or okay. no. uh, inner city schools. Okay. I, announced, like I announced yesterday that we will have in the $1 billion, $250 million for these kids that are having problem uh, handicaps and we need to invest more for that. And when we will distribute the money between schools, we'll take into consideration the number of uh, children that they have with difficulties. And usually it's proportional to uh, the code they have from one to 10. I don't know if you know how it works, but for schools quoted nine or 10, you have a lot more children like that than for the schools quoted one or two. So the money will be distributed, but the school will decide should I have smaller classes or more specialists for these children? It'll be the decision of the school. And I think that uh, professionals are our teachers. They are in a better position than some commissaries right now that are taking some decision without always having qualification to do so. Sorry, but the, the, the governance of the schools, you're, you're implying before that the governance of schools is an elected body. Yes, there's it's what we call of, 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 the, of the control <coughs> of the minority language. That's right. So w what we say is that schools, the, we, we right. have what is called a, a conseil d'établissement, mm -hmm. and the conseil d'établissement is elected with parents. Uh, parents, on a, not, uh, not electors at large in, in within no, the No, parents, parents, mm -hmm. all right? And these parents are more involved because we're talking about the school of their children and we think that that's a, a key to have a better democracy. Asking people don't having children at school is not the best way to interest people. But parents... Well, there's still people paying taxes, school taxes. Yeah, so but... Uh, yeah, but... Or is th this, no, no, no. This is another uh, argument that, that, that uh, right now cannot be used. Right now, in all school boards, only three of them don't have the 35 cents per $1,000 of tax, all right? So right now what we say is we'll ask municipalities to add a line on their uh, invoice for the uh, school tax, and then they'll transfer the money to Quebec. Because right now, it's not true that there's any accountability with school taxes because everybody is at, is at 35 cents, and there's a kind of equalization formula sorry, to make sure that we I'm give sure. the money to the right places. I'm not suggesting that the, yeah. that the, 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 the methodology of the time, I'm talking about the, the people who, who have the chance to elect a board or who have right. the chance to sit on a board. Right. You're saying that, that they can only be parents. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But on that on that subject, if I understand correctly, even on the Conseil d'établissement, the parents are not on the majority. The parents are one group that is represented on the Conseil d'établissement, along with the teachers and the administration. Is that not correct? Okay. Uh, right now, they have the the the, the um, uh, veto uh, when it, there's they are equal. All right. So the uh, the president is a parent. Mm -hmm. All right. Half are parents and half. Well, in uh, level four and five, you have some students, but the other ones are part of the, the personnel of the school. That's something we want to change also. We want to give more powers to parents, but we don't want parents to be involved on day-to-day -day decisions. We want them to be involved with the planification at the beginning of the year. How do we split the money? What are the priorities in this school? So that's where they'll be involved. And I think that they'll be more efficient than having uh, enormous uh, school boards that uh, are uh, not very, uh, where people are not very interested. But, uh, I'm just trying to rec reconcile two things yeah. you said. First you said the Mode uh, Québécois uh, is too centralized and yeah. that uh, yeah. more power should be delegated to uh, in the educational system. On the other hand, uh, a school now, if it wants more money that needs a new roof or has some extraordinary expense, yeah. it goes to the school board. In, in the future, under your plan, you have to go to Quebec City. Yeah, but so yeah. isn't that a more centralization? No. 
It's already like that. I've been Minister of Education for three years. When you have a major work to do on a school or have a new school, it's all decided in Quebec because you have the people to make a good analysis, make sure that the trend about the number of children you'll have for the next 25 years makes sense in this district. So all this analysis is done at the ministry, so it doesn't change anything for that. How about the education ministry itself has been criticized for being a little bit? Is it your plan to strip that down? To, to, to be what? To be? To, to reduce the, uh, the number of civil servants in the education yeah. department, etc. But to give you figures, uh, I like to give figures because I'm an accountant, the, the Ministry of Education uh, costs about a million dollars a year. The uh, school boards cost $600 million a year. So it's true that we may be able to trim a bit at the ministry, but I want that we concentrate on school boards. It doesn't make sense that we spend $600 million a year, have 4,500 employees in our school boards. It doesn't make sense. We should put this money in direct services. Can I move the discussion to corruption? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice meeting you. <laughs> Bill. Um, I, I just wanted to ask, uh, you know, either you, Mr. Deschamps, or Mr. Um, you know, the Ministry of Education. What are your concrete plans for uh, either in regulations or in laws or however you wish to put them through? That will reduce the possibility of collusion and corruption in this province, which is one of the main issues of this election. Was it? Uh, bill number one uh, is uh, quite a concrete uh, measure in, in order to solve the problem. Actually, there are about 12 laws and uh, regulations that need to be looked at very quickly within the first 100, year, uh, 100 days. Of, uh, yeah, we're there for a long period of time. Uh, 100 days. Th days uh, in order to put the, uh, the House together. Um, you know, uh, a new commissioner of, uh, for integrity. Uh, but, you know, not only a commissioner to show that we're doing something, but a commissioner that will have powers in order to uh, do what is necessary. I mean, when you see, uh, you know, the uh, uh, measures that have been taken uh, or have not been taken in, in certain areas where a mayor is still allowed to uh, be in, in, uh, in power, sort of, in, like in Mascouche, uh, while he's been uh, accused about, you know, if you try to do an analogy with the police service, uh, you know, when a police officer is uh, caught doing something wrong or accused of doing something wrong, there are measures to be taken. Well, that's one step that could be looked at because the integrity commissioner will have the powers to come in and, and you know, represent the population. Because the bottom line of all the uh, platform that we have presented is really justice for all. Uh, and sometimes we have the impression that it's not the case. So that's one aspect. The Auditor General. Uh, does not have the power to look at uh, Hydro-Quebec, uh, uh, Société des Alcals, Lotto quebec uh, name them. You know, all uh, uh, state cor corporations are not under the, um, uh, the uh, Auditor General's uh, responsibility. It's done by external auditors, but, uh, you know, there's so much money involved in there that uh, the... Um, government of a coalition wants to have its say uh, on how business is uh, being done. Um, there will be new auditor generals for municipalities of uh, 50,000 and more. Uh, right now it's 100,000 uh, people and more that have uh, to have a, uh, an auditor general. And there will also be another auditor general that will look at all municipalities. So what we want is more control. Uh, I think um, we have, or I have the impression, let's talk uh, for myself, that sometimes municipalities uh, uh, felt that they, they had their own kingdom and that nobody else was there to look uh, over their shoulder. So that's, you know, uh, mainly these are uh, the main aspects of the, um, the new bylaw uh, or the new bill that we want to introduce. From then on, then there's going to be other measures. Uh, you know, uh, small municipalities don't have the expertise uh, 
to make sure that uh, they get their money's worth. Uh, because one city uh, versus another one don't have the same criteria. Uh, so we're also going to be there to, to help them. You know, uh, you, you saw the work that uh, was done at the anti-collusion unit. Uh, we develop uh, knowledge and intelligence on certain um, contractors, uh, and uh, that was not shared with other uh, people. You know, and, and municipalities, when they meet with these entrepreneurs, uh, contractors, they, they often don't know whom they are dealing with, and that's part of the problem. But bottom line, uh, you know, what has been done so far, uh, you know, to fight corruption. Uh, bids are down by 17% at the uh, transport department, uh, 25 to 30% in Montreal. There must have been something uh, done that was right. So we just want to make sure that we uh, will uh, do the right things in order to keep on uh, doing that. If we can give the work, to uh, some Quebecers, uh, it's easier uh, and it's uh, more profitable economically. Uh, but sometimes if you need to get uh, people from outside to have a real competition, we're open to that. But I would like to add something to uh, what uh, Jacques said, because in the, the fight against corruption, there's a, par a part of good management also. I think that right now, we have a major problem at the Ministry of Transport, of a, a major problem of expertise. When you talk to engineers in Quebec, they would tell you something first. If you have an experienced engineer, he would be able to detect that there was some collusion in the submission, all right? Problem we have is that at the Ministry of Transportation, we have only young engineer. It is now like a school of engineers. They start with the Ministry of Transport, and when they have enough experience, they go to the private sector. So when uh, Pierre Moreau said, we will hire a, a, a thousand engineers, I would prefer that we hire 500, but with experience. So it, it, it's from the problem, it, it, it's one of the problem we have in our negotiation with the public sector. They all sit together, all unions together, and at the end of the night, uh, the prime minister decide that for the next three years, it will be two, two, three percent of uh, increase for everybody. And they don't take into consideration offer and demand. And in some areas, you may be, uh, you should maybe have zero percent, but with engineers, we will have to have a, a readjustment. And I'm sure that will save the money that will be mm -hmm. invested there because we need more expertise, more expertise for the Ministry of Transport, more expertise for the follow-up. Doesn't make sense that you ask private company to uh, surveille, oversee, oversee work that is done <coughs> by themselves. There's a, a conflict of interest right there. So, and we don't have exper expertise to offer to small municipalities. Mm -hmm. Like Jacques said, in a small municipalities, you don't have a full-time engineer. So again, you hire somebody from the private to uh, oversee the private sector. So we really need, and it, 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 it's a priority, to rebuild the expertise at the Ministry of Transport. Can you speak yeah. to the question also yep. raised about the, the union, the closed shop, the fact that union, the construction unions essentially... Uh, <laughs> we cannot solve all the problems in the <laughs> first mandate, all right? So what we said is first, when we'll have a new accreditation, we'll have for a, a secret uh, uh, vote, all right? I know many of my friends in small companies, they have problem with that because you have hard guys coming and asking... Uh, uh, employees to sign, but uh, at the end of the day, no vote is taken, so we ask for that. Regarding the construction, first we'll wait mm -hmm. to get the recommendations of the Commission uh, Charbonneau. Uh, uh, I know that uh, there's a work to do there, but right now, what people are saying in the last few days is that we're proposing too many changes. So I want to concentrate on Education, healthcare, and hydro Quebec. These are our uh, three priorities 
I know that we may have more priorities, especially with the uh, Decret de la Construction, but we'll keep some work for the second mandate. Is it fair to say then that you're not ready to explore opening up uh, contracting in Quebec to outside bidders in North America and the world? You'd rather simply well, try to solve it here at home and keep the wall up. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, in some contract, I'm hoping, but honestly, you know, I think that right now we have a problem. We don't have enough entrepreneurs in Quebec. We lost 20% of our uh, uh, decision centers at quarters in the last 10 years. So we have to rebuild what uh, uh, we call uh, an owner's economy. Uh, we cannot have an economy that is strong only with some branch work. So we have to help our entrepreneur uh, growing and having uh, uh, solid companies in Quebec. Do you think that by isolating Quebec, you could build such a system yeah. as this system? I don't want to isolate uh, Quebec, but I, I can see that uh, when, uh, when you hear to uh, Barack Obama, he's saying we will first help our companies. So we have mm -hmm. not to be naive. We have to respect international regulations. But right now, if we want to stop being at the ninth rank in Canada for our average revenue, and we don't talk about the United States, our uh, uh, gap with United States in the average revenue is more than 30%. So we really have to have more entrepreneurs. What, what's fear me uh, a lot is when you ask uh, uh, young people from 20 to 30 years old, uh, yeah, do you wish eventually to uh, start a company? You have 50% per 1,000 uh, compared to uh, Ontario. So we don't have enough entrepreneurs in Quebec. That's why we want to put a new course of entrepreneurship in all uh, high schools. We want to uh, transform the way we deal with Investissement Quebec to pull put real risk capital, we have to help our entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Mr. Legault, you mentioned that the lack you mentioned the lack of expertise in yep. the uh, Ministère de, de, de right. uh, So far that's been talked about in terms of collusion. Mm -hmm. What about the safety of our infrastructures? I mean, if there is inadequate oversight, if there's a lack of expertise in the uh, Ministère des Transports, how can we be sure that the infrastructure even the new infrastructure that has recently been built or is being built now, how can we be sure that it's safe? I fully agree with you. And uh, Maud Cohen, mm -hmm. uh, who is one of our candidates, uh, she's an, an engineer. She used to be a president of the uh, Order of Engineers. And uh, she is a bit scared about that. You're, you're, you're right. Uh, and sometimes uh, Pierre Moreau, uh, he says things uh, without having any proofs uh, of that. But uh, I think we have to make sure that uh, when you have uh, some accident like we had in the last year, that uh, uh, we mm -hmm. know exactly what happened and uh, be able to reassure the population. But right now, it scares me because we don't have the expertise. But it's directly related to corruption also. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, in order to make more profits, quality could be a, a very important issue. It's, it's intertwined. Uh, so even though we look at corruption, and, and Maud Cohen was very adamant uh, that uh, this was uh, also important to take a very close look at the quality. So it's not a new issue. It's, it's being done now. But the, the loss of expertise within the department is, is more than just numbers. It, it's about, you know, quality also. And security. So and does security. that mean increasing the pay of the people that you would hire yes. to pay 500 instead of 1,000? Yes. Yes. And, and also the type of engineers. You know, there are many uh, different uh, expertise within the engineering world. I mean, we saw when I was there at the anti-collusion unit, they hired engineers. One was a nuclear engineer. I mean, it doesn't have to do much with the uh, safety of our uh, highways and infrastructure. So we need to develop a, a uh, very specialized uh, expertise within uh, the uh, transport department. So if we're in the uh, Because of the, the, the lack of expertise, I'm scared that uh, we continue to double budgets and uh, have uh, o o over budget uh, when you realize the, the, the 
the work. So I think that right now, before going any further and promising everything to everybody, I would like that we look at uh, uh, real costs and also real benefits. Uh, uh, and what are the priorities? And the priorities shouldn't be uh, because uh, you're friends of the Liberal Party, uh, you will be on the top of the, uh, the, 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 the pile. Mm -hmm. So uh, we want to put the, the order of priorities with the real needs of the population. Since you've walked in here, you've been talking about change. You're talking about changing the Quebec model. You're talking about changing education, health care. Your campaign has run on change. Your model was about change. And whenever I hear any of that, I can't help but think of back in 2003, Jean Charest was going to re-engineer Quebec society. Mm -hmm. Things had to change, he said. He was elected with a majority, a convincing majority. Mm -hmm. And he hit a brick wall in six months. Mm -hmm. And the people who are screaming now for a public inquiry into corruption mm -hmm. are the same ones who would scream even louder if you yeah. touched their status quo. What makes you think you're okay. going to go any further than Jean It's Charest? a very good question because I think that right now what I see is that people, they agree with the cleanup we propose. They agree to open all high schools until 5 p.m. They agree that everybody should have a family doctor. They agree with decreasing income taxes by uh, $1,000 for the middle class. But they say, will you do that? Will you deliver the goods? And because of Mr. Chare, there's a lot of skepticism and even cynicism and I think that that's my main challenge for the remaining six days why would I do that because I'm back in politics for that I'm a businessman I used to run a company we have 50% of our candidates that are coming coming from the business uh, community far a lot more than uh, the two other uh, parties and we are determined and I don't owe anything to anybody. So I don't owe anything to people financing our party. I don't owe anything to unions like Mrs. Marois. And one of the reasons why I'm not there anymore because Mrs. Marois, she always has to protect uh, eventual support of unions for a, a referendum. So she will never cut in school board. She will never cut in health care agency. She will never cut at Hydro-Quebec because it's the FTQ, we can do that. I'm free to do that. And can I don't, I don't need money line? personally. Mm -hmm. So I want to do these changes for my children. Because right now I'm not proud of what I leave to my children. So that's why. But I, I, I can understand that it's a question of confidence. Uh, will people have confidence in our changes? They agree with our changes, but they say, will they do that? The two other ones didn't do so, so but that's with, the, with the your key. Plan, with your plan, are we going to be trading students in the streets with unions in the streets? Yeah. I don't think so, because right now I focus. So that's why I don't want to play with uh, too much uh, with uh, construction and other issue with the SAQ and things like that. We uh, will work with three uh, uh, groups, CSQ, the unions of teachers, we offer them a salary increase, so it's a good start to ask them to, uh, to be evaluated and take more powers. Usually people, they like to have more powers, but of course when they have more powers, they are more accountable for the results. So that's the first group. Second group, family doctors, FMOQ. It's not easy, eh? it's mm -hmm. tougher than the CSN, I can tell you. But Right now, we have 8,000 family doctors in Quebec for 8 million people. The same ratio as in Great Britain or in uh, Germany or in British Columbia. It doesn't make sense that 25% of the population don't have a family doctor. We have to reorganize. We have to pay them differently. We have to make sure that they take charge of the population, that they don't say on Saturday and Sunday, you cannot be sick. We have to have a strong first line, and we can do it. And I can tell you, Dr. Barrett is determined to do so, mm -hmm. very determined. And the third group is the FTQ. Uh, uh, at Hydro-Quebec, we have right now 22,500 employees. I've consulted André Cailly. I've consulted some experts. They all say that at least you have 4,000 employees too much. And we have to do something, because it's not easy to run a monopoly. 
And that's what Agro-Quebec is. But we'll have to do something. Even if there's a strong union, the FTQ there, we have to do something with uh, Agro-Quebec. It's the state within the state, uh, Agro-Quebec. So I'm not focusing on 50 uh, priorities. I have three main priorities. Mm -hmm. Mr. Legault, this morning in uh, Le Devoir, yep. you proposed uh, that uh, graduates of uh, Quebec yep. medical schools who leave the province should be required to refund at least part of the cost of, yep. of, the cost of their education. Um, can you name some examples of other democratic, and I emphasize democratic, countries or states Kay. that have such coercive measures uh, to prevent uh, a brain drain? Okay, well, first, very important, I'm talking only about doctors, all right? So for me, having uh, people studying at McGill or at University of Montreal from outside of Quebec going back to their country after, it's good because they build relationship with other students from here. So I'm only talking about doctors. Right now, there's a kind of run for having, uh, uh, because of aging of the population, to have as many doctors as you have, okay? And when, when I was a minister, I've discussed that with Edder Monroe Bloom. It doesn't make sense that 50% of the students uh, in medicine, mm -hmm. medicine, mm -hmm. that they get out of Quebec within the first five years. Because right now, all countries, they have, they try to have more doctors. So we have to find a way to make sure that we keep more of them. Of course, you can talk about incentives. We, uh, I'm open to look at that. And what I've said to Le Devoir yesterday is that when I was minister with the Parti Québécois, I've asked our lawyers to, to see, can we do something similar to what you have in the uh, Canadian Army? When you're formed at the Canadian Army, you have to give a certain number of years uh, to the Canadian Army after. They told me that it was against the Charter of Rights, all right? So that's why I said we may have to use the uh, notwithstanding uh, clause. Honestly, it's the last uh, uh, recourse. It's the last option. But I think that right now, and I, I, I told Edward Monroe Bloom, we have to find a solution. Sorry, it doesn't wait. make sense that 50% uh, of the doctors <coughs> uh, uh, we train at McGill uh, uh, leave Quebec within five years after ending their uh, education. Something yeah. you said before. If a, if a medical student comes from New York, and studies here paying, as you know, yeah. significantly more than a Quebec student yeah. would be paying to come okay. here and study medicine. Yeah. But that, that's They're not included in that group no. that you're talking no. about. No. You're talking about native Quebec students who are paying who are paying the, the low Quebec tuition rate, in effect. Right. Relatively. Right. But can you name another democratic country or democratic state that has a coercive measure like that to prevent a brain drain. I'm not talking about North Korea or Cuba. I'm talking mm. about the Democratic. <laughs> no, no. I'm talking. Well, we know that they yeah, have yeah. they have measures to keep their doctors I at would. home. I'm asking about Democratic yeah, but countries. But I, I, I don't know. But I, I can tell you that I expect that uh, more and more countries will do so because there's a run right now. We're not the only one having a problem with aging of population, and right now we cannot increase. Uh, the number of doctors that uh, get out of the four faculties we have because you need doctor to train other doctors so uh, there's a limit and it's a key I think that uh, all of us were getting old and we hope to have somebody to take care of us and we cannot accept to see 50 percent it's not five percent it's 50 percent of the students leaving Quebec and I, I agree that uh, uh, there are many uh, uh, ways to try to solve this problem, but can we accept that is a problem? There's Talk another wrinkle here. Yeah. Right? It's that, you know, in practical terms, it, it plays out locally. Um, where, right. Uh, out of McGill, uh, many of these graduates would like to work in Montreal. Okay. Um, under huh. the rules of the PREM, right. the Régional right. des Effectifs right. Médicaux, there are caps on the number of right. permits. Right. Be granted in Montreal. 
many of the kids coming out of McGill yeah. say we'd like to work here, but we can't get authorized to work in Montreal. Yeah. So the choice becomes Chicago or Chicoutimi, and Chicago wins. Yeah, but, uh, but the issue I, is I was uh, two days from uh, not yesterday, the day before yesterday, I was in uh, Outaouais uh, and get snow. They don't have as many doctors as in uh, the uh, rest of Quebec. All right. They pay the same income taxes that we pay, but they don't have as many doctors. Why is that? Because we have Dr. Balduc, who didn't have the courage to say no to these exceptions. Because I know, even Mr. Barrett, he likes very much to ask for these uh, uh, exemption to have as many doctors as he can. They all want to work in Montreal. Mm -hmm. All right. But I think that people in other regions in Quebec, they pay income taxes. They have the right to have uh, some doctors also. I know, but the practical problem is you're talking about a minority. No, no, but I know that it means that health. it's one. I, so I agree. There's a shortage in the West Yeah, Island. it's, there a, it, it's one of the reasons. Yeah. But you see, what a, what one of the measures we want to put in place also is that the rules of the 15 years for pharmaceutical. All right, we want to cut these rules because we used to have a lot of research in Quebec. When you know my sister is in Kirkland, you can see that uh, Merck Frost and all the companies on the, the highway of the 40, they, they close. And right now, we are the only province paying for the original drugs for 15 years. But we want to cut that and put the money in the hands of family doctors, try to convince them to have more volume take charge of more patients. It will help also to keep uh, doctors here. But if we keep on going like that, we're going to hit a brick wall. And we're not taking care of the elderly the way we should. So what is the solution? Can I just ask you one last question yeah. concerning corruption? Uh, Mr. Duchene, you said this morning on the radio that there were some liberal cabinet ministers from the Montreal area who were on a crucial vote. I didn't give the names. I uh, will not give the names because when the, the question was asked, I said uh, it was first, why is it that we are in an election right now? Uh, why didn't we wait for the uh, Charbonneau Commission to uh, start hearing the witnesses? It would, have been, it would have been a different ball game. So the question was asked, you know, uh, were there ministers? And I said yes. And there will be a witness that will come and give the names. So why don't you just tell us now? Because then uh, I would become the Charbonneau Commission myself. I don't want to do that. What if those people get reelected? Don't you have a responsibility? Uh, no, the responsibility was for uh, Prime Minister, uh, Premier Share uh, to call the election after the hearings. He didn't do that. So why wasn't I asked the question while I was at the Charbonneau Commission? That's the real question. There was uh, a lawyer representing uh, the government of Quebec. He didn't ask the question. Yeah, but you could have said. I mean, you no, you, statements and whatever. Bill, you, you know, a witness cannot stand and plead his case. You have to wait for the questions. And that, that's why I was so upset. They knew, and, and the first day when I started my testimony, I said, I will answer all your questions. But the questions didn't come, and I know why. And when the questions were from the uh, Parti Québécois lawyer, she wanted to know what the names were, you know, and I was not allowed to give the names because the, uh, there was a decision by the commissioner not to disclose what was in the second report. How many ministers are we talking about? Charbonneau Commission will tell you. Are they running in this current election? Uh, I will not do indirectly what I cannot do directly. <laughs> uh, and that's the sad part about it. You know, we have nothing to hide. Yes, Why is it? You're not obliged in any way to uh, not answer that question. I mean, you're not part of the Charbonneau Commission. Uh, you could answer that question quite freely right now. Uh, you know, I usually, uh, and we know each other pretty well, I do not hesitate uh, answering your questions. No, I'm, uh, that's why I'm surprised. I'm, you, know, you shouldn't be surprised. Uh, when, while I was uh, testifying, I was there ready to give the answers. No one asked. He asked about the size of my uh, washroom, uh, if I had a kitchenette, or, but he never asked the real questions. And that was 
To me, very upsetting. So what other information do you think will come out in the Charbonneau second? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wait until September 17th and you know what don't take any vacation mm -hmm. go there and you're going to hear a lot of good answers can I ask one supplementary question yeah. on sovereignty from yeah. what I have been reading in the French papers yeah. the, there's been talk about how ultimately you would face um, a delicate situation if there is a referendum because I think under the yeah. law the leader of the no forces would have to be the leader yeah. of the opposition if you're the leader of the opposition um, and you're not going to represent it, who would you defer yeah. to? Like, how, how would those I, I, I said I don't want to get in, into that, and I think that uh, Mr. Charest would like that I go there. I said that, first, I would vote no, and second, I will be in the camp of people trying not to have a referendum. I think that right now, we should not have a referendum. We must not have a referendum, because we are not in a position to divide... Uh, uh, Quebec. We, we, we need to put focus on good management, on economy, on uh, rebuilding confidence of the population, but not on a referendum. A referendum. Huh? In the event that we do have a referendum, people will look to you for guidance as to who should lead the no forces. What would yeah. you say? Yeah, but I think that, like I said uh, before, I, 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 that's not what we want. That's not what we want. So uh, I'll try, as a leader, to convince the population not to have a referendum. Because if people, and I think that right now the answer will be uh, uh, no, and I think that it will be bad for uh, all Quebecers, because uh, uh, we would then, how would we be perceived by the rest of Canada? In our negotiation with the rest of Canada. If your party's position is not to take a position, you would have to defer to the Yeah, but right now we are a co coalition. We decided that we want to put uh, uh, people together, people from the Parti Québécois, people from the Liberal Party, from the EDQ, all together trying to push for a plan to clean up Quebec, invest in education, relaunch the economy of Quebec. That's what we have. It's a coalition. But of course, Mr. Charest, why? But but, but, but uh, of course, Mr. Charest, <coughs> he did all his career about fighting against sovereignty of Quebec. But right now, he has to. Have you noticed that since the beginning of the campaign, we're only talking about our ideas? That we're talking about the family doctor, about the school open to five, about reduction of income taxes, about the cleanup at Hydro Quebec. We're only talking about our ideas. And within the coalition, they are federalists. And he mentioned one this morning. I mean, then we're going to have a good conversation because I did not join the party uh, to uh, fight for a, a referendum. Uh, my son lives in British Columbia. I was a president of a crown corporation in Ottawa. I mean, you know, and, and in, in this coalition, we talk. I'm sorry to interrupt, just to remind you that we still have 10 minutes. So. <coughs> A question on public transit in the Montreal area. Yeah. You said that you would, you, you favor uh, trains over metro expansion. Okay. I assume that that means, uh, first of all, that the Mascouche train would go ahead despite the uh, shady uh, undercurrent because uh, it's already partly built. But what would it mean for the, the West Island? Would it, there are two, two separate projects there. One would go to the airport, okay. the other would go uh, to St. Anne's and the perhaps here. even beyond. Um, where are you in favor of one of those okay. projects or, or another, or in both? Or are you okay. interested in both? I'll, I'll repeat what I, I said just before. We don't have the figures. I want to see the real cost of all these projects. How many people are involved? How many uh, people will use uh, this, these trains? And after, we'll take a decision. So I'm not close. I, I, I still have my mother and many friends in saint anne de bellevue so I know that uh, uh, they need something in the West Island. But I want to see exactly the real cost. Uh, and I don't want to do like the Liberal Party and the Parti Québécois and say yes to everybody. Right now, we have a public finance problem. We increase not only uh, uh, because of, of the deficit, but because of these infrastructures. We've increased the debt of Quebec last year by $10 billion. 
we have to do something. I, I assume that that same logic applies to the uh, tramway. It's, uh, it applies to the tramways, and I said it very directly to uh, Regis Labome also in, uh, in Quebec City, where the only one who didn't promise anything to Regis Labome except that uh, we are open to give the uh, right for lockouts to uh, municipalities in order to rebuild uh, a balance between unions and municipalities. Because right now, we have $4.5 billion of deficit in pension plans of municipalities. It's not true that we'll ask all the taxpayers, 65% of them don't have a pension plan, to pay for these deficits. And uh, finally, on the, on the gas tax, what is your position on the gas? We're against any increase of tax, tariff, uh, income taxes. We think that uh, uh, they, uh, people in Quebec, they pay enough uh, taxes. So, so, so we want to decrease income taxes, and we don't want to increase uh, any tariff on gas, on uh, payage, on whatsoever. Well, so they wouldn't have tolls either? No, no, no tolls, no. Okay. No. So how, how would you get money for uh, public transit? I think that uh, we need to look at the priorities. We need first to get rid of the corruption. Mm -hmm. uh, we will then reduce the cost of these infrastructures, look at what are the priorities, but it's, uh, uh, there's no question about uh, tolls or any new tariffs. Uh, Bouchard Taylor uh, report that uh, judge and uh, policeman that they shouldn't have, they shouldn't have any religious sign, but uh, we don't want to start uh, asking that for teachers or uh, nurses. Uh, we think that it's too much. Uh, so I think that uh, right now, uh, uh, you're right, we have to uh, be uh, very careful about these issues. Uh, to keep the balance that was built not easily in Quebec, uh, especially when you talk about language. Uh, we all remember Bill 22, Bill 63. Uh, I think that I don't want to extend uh, the Bill 101 to colleges. I don't want to extend the Bill 101 to small companies. I think that we have a balance right now, and we should keep this balance. And but ex trying to explain, because I know that there are some Anglophones who would like to have the free choice of schools, that we cannot have that, uh, because if we do that, uh, it, 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 we, people won't talk French anymore, and uh, it will be a question, would it be in 25 years or 50 years, I don't know, but uh, attraction is so uh, important to English, and we ha need also some uh, uh, new immigrants. We have no choice, it's a question of survival, not a question of being close. But I know many, uh, I have many friends uh, that are from Montreal, they speak English, uh, <laughs> my brother-in-law is, and when they go to Toronto, they are proud to say that I'm from Montreal. So we have to put all Quebecers together and put focus on economy. And you know, thing, uh, for me, the most important thing is education. And I'm happy to, to, to say that the uh, English community is a kind of model because they value more education. And uh, a, a good example also is the uh, Jewish community. Uh, in Quebec, mm -hmm. we have 20% of dropout rates. In the, school, uh, in the Jewish schools in Quebec, there's 1% of dropout rates. So can we use them as a model and in Quebec, yes, we need to put more money in our schools, but we need also to value more education, value more the effort. And I think that uh, uh, when I see that in English schools that they already evaluate teachers, I think that uh, French schools should, should take uh, this as a model. Are you in favor of teaching uh, English and um, French primary yes. schools? Yes, yes. I think that that's the only way to, to learn English. I think that, uh, Evan, I'm open to a project where it, it would help uh, English schools. Some of them, uh, they have a problem of, uh, we have a problem keeping them open in some uh, regions. Why don't we s look at the project of sending French people in English schools for one year? For one year, starting at, at the fifth grade, and I think that it would be the, the, on a voluntary basis, but permit them to do so. I think that that's the only way to, to learn English. Okay. And I hope I uh, would have been able to have that. I just want to confirm, maybe, <laughs> maybe you said a question. 
I just want to confirm one one other thing you yep. just said to Lou DeVore, uh, yep. that you would ask the federal government to apply Bill 101's yeah. rules on uh, the right to work in French yeah. to federal institutions and companies that come under the Federal Labor Code, is yeah. that correct? I think that the principle of the Bill 101 is that all companies over 50 employees should apply the Bill 101. And uh, it will be a request to the federal government. Honestly, it's not in our priority. I think it's said in the devoir also. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, in order to be consistent, uh, we should ask the same thing to uh, federal companies over 50 employees. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.